The Kootenai Valley is approximately 154 miles in length. It's home to Cranbrook, Fairmont Hot Springs, and Golden in the north. Richard and I have two different routes planned. I'm flying up this valley to the left, and then through Rogers Pass, and down over Revelstoke, visiting Maple Lake, and then flying on and landing in Vernon. Richard, on the other hand, will be flying further north and visiting Golden, then coming down through Rogers Pass, having a low pass on Revelstoke, and then joining me in Vernon. The video starts with us loading up our planes at Fairmont Hot Springs. As Richard and I depart Fairmont Hot Springs, my thoughts are on climbing to 8,500 feet so that I can get over a couple of tall ridges on the way to Rogers Pass and Vernon. Later on, I discover that perhaps I should have been at 10,500 feet. Nevertheless, the flight was a spectacular flight.
as I cross over this ridge, I notice that my tailwind has now changed to a crosswind, and the wind has picked up to 11 knots, a bit concerning for when I go through Rogers Pass. Richard has caught up with me and is flying at 10,500 feet where I wished I was. This is his view. After I got home, I reflew Richard's route in the VR system that I have. It was really nice and it took the zigzag out. As I enter Rogers Pass, I notice that the wind is now 17 knots and squeezing through this pass, creating significant mechanical turbulence. It's here that I wished I was at 10,500 or even 11,000 feet flying above all the turbulence. The turbulence is lasting around 12 minutes in this part of the flight. Both my cameras are set to what's called rock steady. It takes a lot of the movement of the plane out and smooths it. Even still, with that on, you can see the picture moving side to side. The actual movement of the plane was much more than what you see in the picture.
coming up on Maple Lake Resort and Golf Course. It's private, so you need permission to land here. I'm about eight miles from the Vernon Valley and was surprised to see this waterfall here. It was a significant waterfall. Richard and I have decided to fly down to Penticton for a bike ride and a coffee. So we're going to land here in Vernon, fuel up, say hello to the ground crew, and then take off right away.
hour departure from Vernon to Penticton is going to be about 134 kilometers along the Okanagan Lake. For me, that's going to take about 30 minutes. For Richard, maybe 20 minutes. His plane is much faster than mine. We'll get a good look at the Kelowna Bridge and West Bank area and we'll be landing in Penticton shortly. After departing Vernon, I've got about two minutes to climb to 2,500 feet and then get on the radio and call Kelowna Tower. I need permission to fly down the west coast of Okanagan Lake and that way I can videotape the Kelowna Bridge and West Bank area. I've been monitoring Penticton's uh, radio and there's a couple of planes that are in the vicinity and they're landing too. Because I'm crossing midfield here, I'd be flying right into them. So I've had to slow the plane down significantly so I can come in behind them. Then I'll fly out over the l lake and land on runway 3-4. We made it to Penticton for a quick bike ride into town and coffee. We rode along the canal and then came back, jumped in the planes and took off again for Vernon. We were having a dinner appointment with my daughter and her husband and we didn't want to be late. We're eating at the Cambium, a very nice restaurant up in the BX area of Vernon. We had five great days of flying with fantastic weather. Now my daughter and son-in-law are hosting us 
and we're having dinner at the Cambium restaurant. I hope you enjoyed the flight. It was a pleasure to make it. Mm -hmm.